الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Today I was asked by an Ashari about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and he asked me. He asked about the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says Ar Rahman Ar Arshistoa. He actually mentioned another verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions that He rose above His throne. He said, then if you guys believe, you, meaning you Ahl Sunnah or you Salafiin, you believe that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne. That means Allah is in a place and Allah is like this. So he began to speculate. I told him that that was philosophy and that is not from the religion of Islam. And he said that they believe, the Ashadis, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the state that he has always been, etc. I said to him, Jazakallah khairan, and may Allah guide us and you, but let's look at what Allah says about himself. In at least 10 ayats in the ver- in the Quran, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is perfect, Allah says, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. Okay, Allah rules above his throne. Allah says that. So we, as Ahl Sunnah, we take the nas, the text, on its apparent meaning. We don't uh, use our aql or our intellect to change the meaning to suit what feels comfortable for us. And I said this to this to the Ashari, I said the a difference is in minhaj or methodology. The Ahl Sunnah, we affirm what Allah says about himself and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirms about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from Sahih Nusus, from text that is uh, sound. And he, I said, and you, on the other hand, you, as with many groups of innovation, you believe that your intellect overrules the nasus. Taqaddam al aql al naql. And Ahl Sunnah is exbidalic. So, Ahl Sunnah, we prefer or give the text, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah, and the uh, understanding or ethar of the Salaf, we give that precedence over our intellect, over our desires, over what we feel is best, what we feel the meaning is. We instead, we go with the nasus, we go with the text. Whereas they use their intellect to judge the text. They say, well, Allah rules above his throne, that means then, and then they begin to infer. This is the danger. So this is a, a difference in methodology. So I said to him also in part of my response to him, I said, and we say also as Ahl Sunnah, we say what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Rabbi wa sallamu alayhi said. He said, what did he say? He said, Yanzalu Rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thuluthu layl al So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as I believe it's collected in Sahih Muslim, he said in an authentic hadith, he said that Allah descends to the lowest heaven every third of the night. And he asks his slaves, you know, who is uh, supplicating, I will answer him, etc. To the rest of the hadith. This is what the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, and we believe in the Prophet wasallam, And we follow the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and we uh, affirm what the Prophet wasallam said. This is what Ahl Sunnah holds on. How can you say you're Ahl Sunnah, and you're not following the Sunnah? Or you believe your aql or your intellect, takes precedence over the Sunnah. The Prophet Muhammad said this. So we say what he said. So I said, it doesn't matter if you're in China. It doesn't matter if you're in Seattle, Washington. It doesn't matter if you're in Saudi Arabia. That whatever time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made clear for us in the Sunnah of the Prophet that he descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. And although it may be uh, day in China and night in Seattle, that doesn't have any effect. We don't use our intellect to say, oh, it means this. So we'll change the meaning to fit what feels comfortable for us. No, the Prophet ﷺ said, and Allah is able to do all things. And so we accept and we stop. Ahl Sunnah stops with the text. And we also operate by another important qaida or, or uh, principle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'un basir. Allah says that there is nothing that resembles him and he is the all-seeing and all-hearing. From this we learn 
that Ahl Sunnah also, even if we affirm something, for example, that Allah has hands, as Allah mentions in the Quran, or that Allah descends, or Allah rose above His throne, that Allah does it in a manner that suits His majesty. It does not resemble His creation, nor does His creation resemble Him. Because Allah said, Laysa kamithli shay. He said, there is nothing that resembles Him. So that's what Ahl Sunnah believes. Then we affirm what Allah affirmed for Himself. He said, because Allah then, after negating, then Allah affirmed. He said, وَهُوَ سَمْعِيُونَ basir." Meaning, Allah is the all-hearing, all-seeing. So Ahl Sunnah says, Allah sees everything and hears everything. And He does that in reality. However, we do not compare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His creation and say that His creation hears and Allah hears and they resemble each other. Abedin. No. Ahl Sunnah doesn't say that. Ahl Sunnah says, yes, the creation hears, but the creation is imperfect. And the creation is nux. And the creation uh, can, you know, is limited. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in all of His His names and His divine attributes. And they are in a manner that fits His majesty. And they are really, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they do not require explaining them away as the Ashadis got from the philosophers. Their arguments are always based on philosophy. And I did challenge anyone who is listening to... Uh, to come up with an, a, a, another premise. Because it's clear. It's nothing but philosophy. That they took uh, Imam Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was influenced by people who were, uh, some of his scholars were Mu'tazila. Uh, uh, okay? And all of these Foreign ideologies, they were all influenced by foreign ide ideologies. They were all influenced by philosophers and things. When the Arabs began to translate the text, the, uh, the text for, the, for European civilization, you know, the Greek and Roman philosophy and all, all the, the texts which forms the political paradigm for the West, the Arabs were the ones who translated that stuff from the language into Arabic and allowed for it to be uh, as a, a gateway for restoring the European civilizations. All of this transmitted foreign ideologies into Islam because those translators began to be influenced by those ideas and ideologies of, from the Greek philosophers. This is where these ideologies came from. These ideologies that are within the context of Islam and the sects of Islam and have influenced and in fact ruined the Aqidah of many of our Muslim brothers and sisters. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from every kind of evil and may, and may Allah bless the Muslims to return to, back to what the Quran, which is the speech of Allah says and what the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam affirms for us and what the Sahaba radiyallahu taala anhu ajma'in how they understood the religion was sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.